So usually when I need to rig a wing, the tricky part comes down to getting my feathers to fan out properly without creating sort of uh, an overly complex structure to maintain their position and to allow me to go in and also control them in other means, uh, in other ways. Um, usually what I might do is I'll put a joint structure on, uh, I'll create a joint structure for each feather and then find some way to attach the uh, duplicates of that joint structure to the wing. Um, so, uh, usually what you might see is you'll see constraints or something like that used, or even uh, curves, uh, any number of ways to actually do it. I like to do it in a way that's actually fairly simple, easy to make adjustments to, uh, even easy to uh, replicate if you're just like, if someone like stumbles across it, they should be able to easily figure out how it was done without too much trouble, if, uh, especially if they need to fix anything. So what I like to do is I'll create my feathers, which is I have here. I have uh, my large primaries and a couple of uh, small secondary feathers. And each one of these I actually put into a group. And the group is essentially going to uh, act as my control. It's basically going to control the feather without actually... So I'm rotating the group. And if you look at the channels box, you'll see that there's no rotates because I actually changed the group, not the feather. This way I have a way to control the feathers once they are attached to the uh, wing. Okay, But even before we do that, what I need is I actually need the object that I'm going to actually connect them to. Now in this case I'm going to use one object in order to anchor all of my feathers to the wing. Or at least one object and then a couple of objects attached to it. So I'm going to create essentially a little strip that's going to run the length of the wing. And you can use polygons for this, um, but if you use polygons, you need to make sure that you edit the UVs so that they correspond to basically the length and the shape of the strip. A uh, quick and easy way to do this is to just use a NURBS plane. Since NURBS uh, come essentially with all of their uh, UVs laid out based on the shape of the geometry, not uh, based on your choice later on, it's a little easier. So in this case, the UVs basically run along the X and Y axes. And I, so I'm just going to, and usually the U corresponds to the X, and I want to create basically a strip that has about 18 to 20, uh, 20 patches along its length. So I'm going to type in 18 right here. And the width I can figure out later. And same thing for the... Uh, the length. And so I just create it and it's already got my patches. Now I can simply just move it over here and then basically scale it down to the strip, the height I want it to be, and then of course to the width I want it to be. I'll move it into position. You want to put it essentially where you, I don't know, somewhere along where you think the feathers will be. If you're, if you're actually working with a design, it might be a good idea to basically come in and just sort of uh, reshape it a little bit. And so you can use something like uh, soft selection. If you just select some vertices and just tap B, you should uh, activate soft selection. And then you can actually start to deform your strip to try to slightly match or match the arc or any or the shape of your wing a little bit more if you want to. You don't have to, but you can use it. It's going to use skin weights essentially to control it, but if you just want to do it stylistically, you can. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Okay. But once you have your strip and you're happy with it, of course, go in, name your strip. I'm going to call mine wing, and we'll call it uh, ribbon, underscore L for left. And once it's in place, make sure, like you do with any piece of geometry before you rig it, freeze transformations and delete construction history so that there are no unforeseen problems later on. Okay, so now we need to do another thing. We need to switch to Dynamics or N Dynamics. Uh, if you have a newer version of Maya, you want to switch to N Dynamics so that you can access hair. If you have an older version of Maya, I think before uh, 2013 version or maybe 2014, then you need to go to Dynamics to access hair. Okay, so under ha N Hair, I'm going to go to Create Hair, go to the Option box, and remember that our 
strip is laid out relative to the x axes so we're going to need to create uh, essentially follicles running along the x axes but only one row along the z the uh, along the y which means that when we actually tell it to create hair it'll just create follicles for each one of our patches now in this case we created about 18 patches so in the create hair options we're going to change the u count down to 18 to match the number of patches okay we don't need to worry about anything else just the u count and the v count so the u count's going to be 18 for this and the v count's going to be 1 and usually I'll create the output using NURBS curves just because they're a little easier to deal with and to delete quickly. And so I tell it to create hair. And so immediately if your UVs are laid out properly, and since this is NURBS, the UVs were laid out based on the shape itself, um, we immediately have our UVs and, I mean, we immediately have our follicles and the curves laid out relative to those patches. Now, we need to do a little bit of quick cleanup because we actually don't need the dynamics, we don't need the curves, basically we don't need the hair system, we just need the follicles. Go to your outliner, and in your outliner you want to find the hair system output curve. Select that. Uh, then you want to select the hair system node, hair system 1 node, and you can just delete those. And gone. Uh, you can also delete the nucleus that's created for the dynamics because we don't need that either. All we need are the follicles and our curve, and our, uh, sorry, our ribbon. Now if you actually move the ribbon, you'll see that the follicles are now attached to it, and that's primarily what we needed. Okay? So for the moment, I don't really need to see the follicles, but uh, while we're at it, let's do a little more cleanup. I'm going to come in, I'm going to select the directory with my follicles in it, and we'll call it, I'm going to rename it, we're going to rename it Feather Follicles, just to keep track of things. And I'll call it Feather Follicles Left. That's just Feather, because I just have a left wing. Okay. Next. We need to actually take our ribbon we need to basically bind it to the joint the uh, joint structure of the wing. So simply select the strip, shift select the root of the joint structure, and switching to your animation menus, go to skin, smooth bind, option box, and make sure you're binding to the joint hierarchy. And you can choose, let's say closest in hierarchy should be good. You can do a closest in distance. I mean, basically, whichever one's going to work best for you. Uh, skin binding method. Again, whichever is going to be best. Make sure you nor your normalized weights set for interactive, just in case you need to go back in and make some adjustments to the weights e uh, quickly. Usually, that's the best method. Forget. Uh, uh, you don't want to worry about. Don't do not maintain max influences. Try to avoid that, and you can tell it to remove unused influences, that's fine. If we need to paint anything in later, we can. Uh, max influences is a good place to start with the, uh, the default setting. It's around 3 is fine. And then just do a bind. Okay, so once we're bound, we can select their joints. We're going to select all three, shift selecting them, and then just test. And so when I rotate them, you can see that our ribbon is basically responding to the wing fairly well. It looks like the weights do need a little bit of adjustment. I'm just going to hide the follicles. So I'm going to go to my show menu and tell it not to show follicles. And so I need to paint weights. Just right click on the geometry and choose paint skin weights tool. Or if you're in a much older version of Maya, again, select the geometry, go to skin, edit, smooth skin, paint skin weights tool in the option box. And it'll bring up your tools. And I like to paint using the color uh, color ramp, so I can actually see the levels of influence relative to my selection. So if I select my shoulder, I can see my shoulder actually doesn't have too much control here. What I like to do is like to come in and I'll actually just add in more control of the shoulder. And then switch to my elbow, check that, and that one looks fine. 
wrist looks fine more or less. And of course you need to test everything to uh, make sure it's actually deforming like you need. If you're getting some sort of a weird distortion, something like this, then of course you want to go in and make some adjustments. And so one thing you can do to try to see if you can fix the problem is you can go to, let's say, where it's actually having some issue and you can choose to set the paint operation to smooth and then just flood it and see if it cleans up the, uh, the deformation a little for you. And you can even come in and smooth it further yourself if you wish. Switching between the influences and trying to smooth out the area. Okay, so now I need the follicles, so I'll go back to show to show follicles and if I go back to the outliner now we go to our feather follicles I expand it and then you should be able to see all the follicles now usually it gives them a very long and complex name I like to shorten it a little bit so I just select the first follicle and then shift select all the way down to the bottom one and then I use the rename feature that's in the uh, top of the top right corner of the interface right next to the uh, the render uh, the render window buttons Right here, you choose rename, and then you can just type in a name, and I'm going to call these Fev. I'll say Feather Fall for follicle, and then I press enter, and it'll give me a much shorter name. It's a little easier to work with, and easier to uh, just read through if I need to track that specific follicle. I can spot it pretty fast. And so I have about 18, and it basically numbered them 1 to 18. Okay, and so next, I need to actually start attaching the feathers. Now what you can do is you can do this a couple different ways. You can constrain your feathers, you can parent, uh, just do a regular parent. So what I like to do is I actually created a script to help me do it quickly for a lot of things, but it's pretty simple. I have a feather and it's in a group, so I'm selecting the group that's around the feather. Shift select the follicle, press P to parent it, and then zero out the translates. And it basically just snaps it over to the follicle. It's, fairly, it's pretty much that simple. And you just do that for the entire stretch of the ribbon. And of course for different sections you can do different sizes of feathers to create whatever pattern you need. And you can of course distort the, uh, the NURB again to again assist in developing the shape that you need. Now I created a little script to help me with this. And so let's say I'm going to use this for the inner wing here. So from shoulder to elbow and so I just need to select those follicles and so I'm going to do that from my list here and that should be up to about the nine and then I need to select my feather and so I'm going to use the second group of feathers and I'm using my script so I'm going to snap and so it basically created duplicates and then snapped and connected them. Simple. So my script created nine feathers and it snapped them to the follicles that correspond. Now one thing, the orientation of those follicles was different from the feathers which is why they're standing upright like this. But it's pretty easy to fix. So I'm going to select the feathers, press my up arrow, and they're also a little offset to one side because the feather group was offset to one side. So with the translate value, I'll just set that to zero for the top of the group, shift them over, and then I can just rotate the group to get them back into the correct position. Or what I can also do is because instead of using strict duplicates, what I like to do is I like to use instances. And I use instances just in case I need to, let's say, edit UVs or anything like that. I can edit UVs all on the original and it will automatically update on the rest. So in the same instance, I can also take the vertices and manipulate the geometry to make corrections to the shape or the orientation to fix a problem with the duplicates. So I can do, do it either way and either way works just fine. Okay, uh, in this case I'll just actually take the group that's around the feathers and just manipulate that to make the correction. And so I simply have to rotate it in 90 degrees. And so now the feathers line up. And so now I can do the feathers for the next section. If I want to, I can use smaller feathers or bigger feathers. 
but I think I'll stick with the same feather. So again, selecting, I'm selecting my follicles first, and so it sounds going to be 10 through, let's say, 14. Select my secondary, and snap. And there we go again. Up arrow, I'll zero it out. And so it's as simple as just doing that. Okay, and so last but not least, we'll do the primary feathers. And so it's going to be the last four. Now, usually when it comes to the hand of a bird, you're going to have about, or say the primary feathers, usually anywhere from five to seven. So I'm a little under here, but just for the demo. And so take my largest one and then snap. Zero that out, rotate it by negative 90 degrees. Okay, so what I can also do is I can come in and since these are instances, I can come in and if I decide that maybe these feathers are too long or too big or something like that, I can of course come in and scale them down a little bit, make a few adjustments, so stylistically we get more along the lines of what we need. And then of course I can still come into them individually and make adjustments. Let's say I need to fan them out a little bit to make it look a little more like what I need. And it's pretty easy to do that without causing any issues. I mean, I can also come in here and scale these feathers individually to make additional adjustments. Now, of course, this won't make any corrections to UVs based on this. So you'd have to deal with that relative to whatever textures you put in. Okay, so let's say that's good enough for now. Okay, so now we can test. Select my joints. And then, and then just use my wing. And so as you can see, everything follows perfectly. We get a nice fan. Fanning of the feathers works out rather well. And of course, if I decide that I want the feathers to be not so flat or overlapping, I can come in and I can even make some extrusions on my feathers. Or if I just want to, let's say, change the angle of the, of, the, of the feathers so that they're not so flat, I can simply select the UVs, maybe not for the entire thing, but just on sort of the base, and then just rotate them a little bit, and then we'll rotate every one of the feathers so that now they have a slight angle. And so that they're less prone to overlapping. Okay, so a fairly simple setup. It doesn't take too much time other than uh, connecting your feathers to the strip. Uh, one of the last things you probably want to do in the setup, though, is you don't have to worry about the follicles uh, showing up on a render because they won't. Um, but as for the strip, you can do one of two things. You can either uh, set its visibility to off, so completely hides it, or what you can do is you can simply go to, into its attributes, under uh, go to the shape of your ribbon, and go to the render stats and just disable its ability to cast or receive shadows and make sure it's not, you know, basically make sure it's not visible in reflections or anything like that. This way you don't have to worry about it uh, causing any problems in the render. But it'll be a physical element to help you actually to control things. You can still come in and paint weights on it if you need to to make adjustments to your deformation. And essentially that's creating the fanning feathers for a bird wing.